So yeah, um, I want to start off tonight with a question for you guys. And this is actually one of the most common thing I get asked over the phone. Can I buy another property? So the question is, how would you like to buy a property every three to five years without needing to save for a deposit? Woo. <laughs> so this is, this is, uh, this is, it sounds, it sounds insane, but this is something that I get asked every day. Um, so the question is not how, but why? Why are we, why are we doing the properties? And um, a lot of the time when we have these property investors is this word right here, financial freedom. And what does that mean for most people? It's the day you can stop working and still enjoy the same lifestyle. And that's sort of like what that Kiwi saver is about, like the, the day where you can just retire and not worry and still have that income coming in. Um, and the problem is that finance is like a golf swing. You know, even a small adjustment today is going to make a massive difference in the, in the long term. And you can see that with just 1% fee, that's going to make $65,000 difference. When we, when we sit down to ask uh, most couples, uh, so when, when do you think this day is? You know, um, and by default, they're 65 because they think their retirement funds is going to be, be enough. Um, but when you take a closer look, uh, close hard look at what they're doing in terms of savings, their strategy, their plans, chance of them actually retiring like comfortably would be age 100 or beyond. So with the right advice, with the right people on your side, I think we can achieve that a lot sooner. And that's what, that's what iReFi is about, um, putting the right people in place um, around you and giving you the right advice around uh, sort of your financial future. So I'm going to share with you today, um, as Andrew was saying, some case studies. Three, I'm going to show you three most common investment strategy that we see uh, our clients uh, use. Three case studies of cl existing clients who have done it in the past and, and who are still doing it. And then uh, three of the biggest mistakes that we uh, see family do because we had the chance to sort of talk to a lot of families. Um, so, three common investment strategies used by people like you and me. Now, one thing about an investment property is uh, it's, it's about getting the foot in the door because once you have the first one, the second one, it's going to get a lot easier and easier because, because that, that um, equity is just going to keep building up and you'll be able to use that and unlock it to, to do more with it. Um, so with the right strategy in place, it's, it's only going to get easier, just like what it says over here. Um, and there is one central principle with the, the properties. It's, it's about recycling the equity. So some of you might, might be new to you, but most, most will probably know if mum and dad already own a house uh, for, for 10 years um, in, in, the, in the local. So it might be my mum and dad. You know, they, they own a property in Harwick for the last 10 years. Um, so what happens is we, we've seen in the, in the property market uh, the prices have gone up over the decade. And so they've got a small mortgage and what they can do is that they can go back to the bank and ask for a top up. Now, presuming that they have surplus income and you do have to work, you do actually have to have a job to, to get the top up, uh, you can ask for a deposit. So with the surplus income, the bank's going to lend a little bit more money and you can recycle that uh, deposit out as a as a as an equity for for another property so you some some people choose to gift this deposit to their kids some people might use it for themselves now with that extra deposit they're gonna propose to the bank and say hey can i get a pre-approval uh, because i'm gonna get a second rental income coming in and so they would be then able to use uh, that mortgage on a second property now they can do this every three to five years, like conservatively. Um, and I'm going to show you a real case study. Now, prior to 60% uh, LVR rule, if you, for you guys that don't know what the LVR rule is, is uh, a, just sort of a year and a half ago, a year, year ago, the, the Reserve Bank introduced this rule where you need at least 40% to actually buy your investment property. And that slowed down the market quite a bit. But prior to that, it was a little bit insane because people were able, like with the, with the hot market that, was, that we were in, people were doing this every half a year, one year, 
um, and they were, they, were, they were building a portfolio of 8, 10 properties really quickly. So the 60% hit the spot and it slowed down the market a little bit. It's doing what it needs to do. But with some creative uh, sort of methods, some clients are still using the equity to buy more properties, so which we're going to show you. So the, the first uh, strategy that we see in the most commonly used one is uh, off the plan. Now, what is this kind of strategy uh, good for? People with uh, maybe a lower equity position, as little as 40, 50K deposit. And they can go for this kind of strategy off the plan because you only need a 10% initial outlay of uh, cash. So this is an actual client who bought Vinegar Lane in Ponsonby in December uh, 2014, just over uh, two and a half years ago. So the purchase price at the time was $587,000. So they put a 10% deposit down. And the rental income was pretty good. Um, this is excluding the body corporate, uh, 550 a week. But uh, in saying that, it's still, it was still sort of like break even. They don't need to worry too much cash flow wise uh, if they put that loan on the interest only. So this settled recently last month. Uh, they revalued it. Uh, register value came in at 630. Uh, sorry, 690. Uh, that average, like straight line, is around 6%, or actually compounded 6% return on a, on a year to year. Um, and yeah, that was, that was a good result for them. They were really stoked. They got into the property market with just 10%, and then they had to just top up the remaining 10% on their, on their existing property. So there's a hack with off the plan. And off the plan hack is that there's LVR exemption. Like we were just talking about the 40% deposit that you need. With off the plan, you only need 10%, you only need 20% of its investment property. But if you're, if you're like say for, you, you're gonna move into the property, you can go as low as 10% with some banks. Does this make sense? So, so like one, one family that we have is, uh, they've got a bit of equity they've built up. They topped up their mortgage. They use this equity to put a deposit on one of these property. They then settled a second property with a second bank with a 90% loan. So they were on their second property with just a very, very small amount of equity. Make sense? Cool. Um, so this second one here, uh, you probably hear the most is renovate and revalue. So this client here bought a property about three years ago. They decided they um, need to sort of move on, do, do the next thing. So at the time when we uh, revalued their property at the bank was 670. They did $40,000 of renovations, uh, just sort of create a new living space. And when we got a registered valuation back at 750 k So they were able to make their money back and top up a little bit more. But most importantly, they, were a they had enough equity to buy another property. So renovations is probably like on the lower end of the returns. Um, if you're wanting to add more equity, on your property, something like adding an extra bedroom. This could be turning one of your kitchen into a, to a bedroom. This is always going to give you a higher rental yield. Um, and then also the minor dwelling. The minor dwelling is all, always a really, really positive uh, return on, on investment. Now the third, the third one that we see, um, this, is, this is better for people who have a higher, a higher uh, income. So they might have higher cash flow surplus um, that they can use, um, and they need, they need a strong equity position. They might have like a 1.5 mil property out east. So they can, they can go for the land bank, and literally it's banking some land. That's, that's what it is. So this, this is a famous accountant uh, that did this project here. So they bought a Glendon property. This was around 650K. Uh, it had 1,000 square meter land. So with the unitary plan, with some of these houses, you're able to subdivide them into, into multiple sections and build houses on them. And in some cases, you'll be able to build terrace housing. You can build a whole block of units. So with this, uh, with this client, they basically moved that house to the back. They lifted the whole thing and moved it to the back and built two new ones. So you can see the two new ones up at the front and then the, the house at the back. So I'm just going to show you the numbers on what this looks like. So to do this kind of project, um, you, might, you might want to have at least $150,000 to $200,000 of household income because uh, the mortgage borrowed is around $1.5 million. Um, and what, what ended up happening was the, the client actually sold the $600,000, uh, the initial property that they bought, they sold it for $600,000. 
And then what happens is with the two new, two new houses, they kept that. And by renting that two houses out, they, they got $1,320 of uh, rental income. And a, a mortgage on 5% interest rate is around $1,000 a week. So they were able to keep the two properties and actually have it paying off itself. Now, you might see the equity recycled and equity locked up. What does that mean? So to start this project, this client had around $375,000 equity that they had to use from their property. So if they have like a 1.5 mil property, they have a small mortgage of 300,000, they could potentially look at doing this kind of project. So equity recycle is putting the equity in and being able to take it back out for another project. The equity locked up is what he ended up using off out of his house. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, so I'm going to show you the three case studies, as, as we were talking about, of mum and dad to recycle the equity to buy more properties. So I've changed the names a little bit. Um, these, are, these are probably the most successful case. So I'm I want to give you like a full picture of what these guys did. So the first family is Mr. and Mrs. Chen. Um, they're, they're a very interesting couple. Like I've, I went to their house uh, one day, parked outside as a, as a ca uh, Toyota Camry. Very, very old. The paint is chipping off. Um, but they, they took me inside and it was magnificent. It was out west, it's, it, they got this magnificent view in, the, in their backyard. So outside it looked like just a brick and tile house. You go in, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and just, just a very com uh, humble, humble couple in general. And the interesting thing is that they never earn more than $65,000 each. Um, and this, this was the first property that they bought in Hamilton, this 14 Cameron Road. Um, Mr. Mr. Chen finished university there and he decided to buy a house for 150000 at the time. Um, and since then though, like over the course of 20 years, he's bought four more properties in Auckland and uh, that, that averages around four to five, yeah, one property every four to five years. Now the interesting thing about Mr. and Mrs. Chen that they recently finished is this Hamilton property. So what they did is they took this Hamilton property and they actually uh, bulldozed, bulldozed down this house and they put four terrace housing on it, which is, which is pretty cool. So you can see that that's the finished product, uh, the terrace housing. Um, and each of these terrace house uh, rents out for 600, just over $600. So, and, and the interesting thing is the, the land is only 630 square meter wide. So I was really surprised when I saw this. I was like, whoa, you can fit four of those, five bedrooms on there. And, and he rents these rooms out to students because it's nearby in the university. So each house rents for $600. Um, today's Mr. and Mrs. Chen's portfolio is worth $5 million plus. So they've still got a two mil mortgage, but they, they're not choosing to pay it off right now. So, I mean, they can decide to, okay, sell up the portfolio and pay off the mortgage but they don't, need the, they don't need the income because at the moment they're still getting around 80,000 80, passive income from their property investment portfolio and they're just sort of just enjoying it and thinking about the kids, how to get them into properties, uh, which, which is pretty cool. Now the second family that I'm going to share with you is Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. So Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, they, they started in their late 30s. Uh, they had two kids. They were in uh, a, better, a better profession, so they were earning 100K each. Um, one in sales, the other one in project management. So they bought their first property about eight years ago in Onihanga. Uh, and so this is what they did. They bought, they bought a property with a big piece of land on it. And what they did was uh, Mr. Mr. Johnson, you know, like he found a hack. He, he subdivided the piece of land at the back and he sold the front house for the exact same price, pretty much, more or less, as, as what he bought it for. Um, and then he's got, he basically essentially have a free piece of land. And uh, he, he never went back, he never looked back from uh, investing in properties. So today, Ms. Mr. Um, Mrs. Johnson, um, they're still looking at subdivision project. They, every time their equity allowed them and their, the bank allowed them, they actually look for another subdivision project. Um, and today they own more than 15 properties. Well, they own 15 properties worth more than $13 million, which is quite substantial. Um, but Mr. Johnson has since then like, quit his job. He's become a full-time developer. He's having a whole, whole heap of fun with this 
piece of land over here that um, he bought at a bargain price in Waiuku. Uh, he's, he's subdividing it into eight. He just sold one of the piece at the front. And yeah, he's just, he's just enjoying it. But um, yeah, I mean, he can choose to sort of stop working if he wants, but I think the guy just enjoys what he's doing. Now the third one here is not as, um, uh, this, is, this is my mom and dad. So my mom and dad, like we're from Hong Kong uh, originally. My dad's a chef in the Navy. My mom is a bookkeeper. Um, and we came, came to New Zealand with very little uh, at the time. And the first thing that we did was like, we, we worked for a little, my dad worked for a little while, but the first, first bunk, uh, bucket of money that we had, we bought a fish and chip shop. So I was, I was at, the, at the counter, just behind the counter, you know, have you been to the fish and chip shop? I was the, the kid at the back going, you know, two dollars, two dollars, three dollars. Um, but yeah, this is the first house that we bought in Beach Haven, 301 Ringatia Road. Um, and my parents always had the focus of paying off their mortgage, having, a, having less mortgage. They, they hate owing people. They, they don't like the idea of having a mortgage. And that was their focus. So um, because we were real busy at the time, we would buy takeaway, try and do it up over the course of year and, and sell it. So we were always always working, my mom and dad is always working really, really hard, 12 hours a day. Uh, we're fortunate enough to upgrade without selling the first property. And then they also bought a third one off the plan with, with um, the intention of like giving it to my sister, um, you know, as, 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 as a university gift. Um, later on, they, they actually decided they want a rest from the takeaways. You know, they've had four different ones and they want to take a rest. So they wanted to deleverage a bit. And the market was slightly, like it wasn't as hot anymore. It was like cooling off. The real estate agent was telling it like them, like, oh, you got to sell the property now. So, so they, they took the advice. They, they were quite scared because their mortgage was on principal and interest. So that's a, that's a massive repayment. So the simple idea of um, interest only didn't, didn't like click for them. Um, by lowering the repayment, they could actually keep those properties. But they sold those property nevertheless, um, and majority of the mortgage got paid off on own occupied because they, they, they got a property in Harwick. Um, however, they, today they're still paying off the same mortgage. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud of my parents, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, I think in terms of choice, they, they didn't get the right advice. And, and that's the reason sort of why I'm doing what I'm doing, because I feel like I can contribute to families like my mum and dad who are just very hard working, but they just need sort of like the right direction. Um, and so that leads me on to the three biggest mistakes that we see sort of families are sort of making today. Uh, with the first one is this here. I, I think a lot of families, they, they sort of default to, hey, we're just gonna retire at 65. Um, and I think for, for people who are in the seminar, they, you guys probably don't have that. Um, but most, most families we sit down with actually have that. They, they think it's just going to happen. They don't have a bigger vision of, of what, it, what it actually takes to stop working and get that passive income. They don't have a vision of how much equity they have to build up um, over time. And so failing to plan is planning to fail. So the second one is, uh, I'm going to quote Warren Buffett here. He said, uh, uh, when, when, when people are fearful, he's greedy. And, and vice versa, the opposite, when people are greedy, he's fearful. Uh, but the market does exactly the opposite. Like most, most families are listening to the news, like, oh, they, they're waiting when everyone's waiting. Um, they, they try and predict the market. They try and, they try and think about what is going to happen next, so I'm going to try and get the, the best opportunity right there. That's, that's what we call in finance a technical analysis, which is, which is I think, the wrong way to do it because Warren Buffett works on a fundamental, and I think there are some fundamentals in our market that we can work on as well. So the third one that they don't have is the A-team. So uh, the A-team, you've, you've got four people up here. The A-team stands for an advisor. You do need an agent, um, but if you ask them, should you sell your property, they are, they're always going to say, say yes. Um, and then you've got accountants, and you also have an architect that's going to show you how to do, do your subdivision. The one that doesn't start with an A that you must have is solicitor as well. So accountant, agent, advisor, uh, solicitor, and architect. So I think surrounding yourself with the right people around you um, 
people who just know a little bit more than you, not, not, not I guess it's, it's probably like your neighbor or your friend. Like they know a little bit more than you and if you listen to them, it might, it might not be the full story. But if you have someone like the A team that actually work in that profession, you're gonna get a lot better advice. The biggest problem that I refi see today is that most people are dealing with their bank directly. And this is, this is a huge problem in the market. And it's kind of like going to see the GP when you need to see a specialist. Um, and the three major problems that we see is that number one, a bank might not necessarily offer you the lowest interest rate. Uh, secondly, single product offering. What does that mean? Like they, they have, they, the banks, they're called QFE. What they can do is sell their own product. They only can give you advice on one product. Whereas uh, advisor is RFA where they can sh sort of show you what's the difference between all the banks. Uh, come and administer advice. Uh, again, it's, um, it might be very limited how, how much they can share with you about property investments or what other people are doing. So I'm gonna expand on this a little bit. Like this problem, this is the problem that we're talking about. Four out of 10 people um, actually deal with an advisor in New Zealand. Our neighbor country in Australia, they're sort of on that 66%, two out of three people are dealing through advisors and it's growing to 70%. So uh, that, that's a massive, like we're lagging behind in that sense. And this interest rate here, you might see 4.14. Um, not everyone is getting that because uh, they might be only talking to their own bank ever. So BNZ is do doing the lowest interest rate on their own occupied. Um, and so for some, some families, they, when they come off the renewal, they can sort of com compare different banks. Now the second one is different uh, bank policy is going to affect your borrowing capacity in terms of like buying investment property. So this is a quick cheat sheet. Um, if, you, if you're a young, young family with, uh, or a young couple that's looking for a first home um, and you, you're, you're looking for flatmates and you're going to have that extra income coming in, ANZ is going to actually give you the maximum approval. So if you compare this with like BNZ, for example, it's actually $200,000 difference. So if anyone in the audience like looking to buy a home, $200,000 is going to be a massive difference, right, in choices. Um, and then the second, Second one here, with family more than three kids, uh, Westpac and Cooperative Bank is quite lenient around the lending. Um, this, is, this is basically, the, the reason is every bank actually accounts every child that you have as an expense, a monthly expense. Now Westpac actually calculates them at half the price of everyone else. So, so, so Westpac likes kids, uh, basically. And, and <laughs> P P A Y like so you've got you've got this China like this picture of China silhouette so B N Z if you've got family overseas they want to invest in New Zealand or they want to help you get into a property um, B N Z at the moment is taking overseas income as long as they're on a salary so this is this is a pretty good bank for overseas income and then the last one here you see with the four houses this is for any new builds off the plan um, A S B and Westpac generally pretty good. The reason for this is if you're buying it off the plan, like let's say a property that's not been built and you've got this, you know you're going to get this income later on, not every bank is actually going to take that income to help to give you more borrowing. And only Westpac and ASB can actually give you extra lending for this income that you're not getting yet. Make sense? Cool. Um, and then again, the third one, like this is, this is what, what it's all about, like, for us, we truly believe, like just surrounding yourself with the right people, um, it's gonna it's gonna get you to that financial uh, freedom point a lot sooner than if you did it by yourself. And and that's that's the third thing that the bank I don't think can offer, uh, and this is what we can do. So lastly, I'm gonna sort of sum up with um, the I refi three simple steps. So this is what we can do for you, uh, and. I like to sum it up by this graph here. So in most families, what's, you look at what's their biggest expense is usually that third one there, the mortgage interest. And it accounts for about 60, sometimes even 65% of their expense. So wouldn't you agree if you get that piece right, you're going to get 80% of the result for 20% of the effort. Um, and, and we truly believe that. So next time you need to do a new purchase, or a mortgage renewal, remember to I refi. It's a, it's a three-step process that uh, I'm going to show you.
So I stands for interest and cashback. I think it's important that you look at your options, ba different banking options, because different banks have different pricing model. Um, and de depending on your situation, depending on the property that you're buying, they're going to give you different interest rates. So getting a better interest rate, cashback, um, every time your renewal comes up as well, that's, that's going to make uh, a difference. Um, if you guys don't know what this graph is about, this is your mortgage over 30 years. And that little gray part is paying off your mortgage slightly, like a little bit faster. So if you're negotiating interest rates um, every time it's coming up, you're going you're gonna to pay off your mortgage one or two years sooner. Um, and that's, that's very powerful stuff. So the second one, RE, uh, most people focus on just interest rates so much. They, they come to us, they only talk about the rates and nothing else. But structure is so important because this is, um, this is the thing that's going to protect your assets. This is, going to, this is going to be what's going to help you pay off your mortgage a lot faster. So whether to have an offset loan, how much to have an, on, on an offset loan, you know, whether to put your pro uh, property in a company, for like a look-through company to save tax, um, whether to put it in a trust to, to protect it, or should you have an interest-only loan. So this is, this is what an advisor can help you with. And this is the thing that's going to save you more than the two, two or three years that your interest rate is going to save you. And getting that right is, is very important. So after we talk about interest and structure, the third one is FI, and that stands for financial future. So looking at what is the next step for you? What, what could you potentially aim for? You know, what is your goal? Like, that's what we're interested in to know. When do you want to buy, like how many properties do you want to buy? When do you want to buy another property? How much income do you need? Because we can show you what exactly what the bank is looking for so that you can aim for that job that's going to pay that amount um, in the next two, three years. So the, the second one is that we ensure that you get there. So what this means is uh, insurance. I, I think uh, a lot of the time we, we um, forget that, hey, like we're getting ourselves in this uh, position where we've got exposed to mortgage, we've got kids. But what's going what's gonna to happen if we can't contribute? So that, that is a very important piece as well. And I think getting that right <laughs> is going gonna, is gonna to actually pay off your mortgage the quickest. This is the one that's going to save you 10, 15 years if you get it right. So iRefi resources, um, there's a few things that you can uh, look at. We've got our website, which we've got a learning center that we call it. Um, you can find a lot of... Uh, Articles about investment property, uh, first home buyers, for first home buyers as well, some mortgage structure advice, um, you'll find that on our website. Um, and then you, you can also try out our mortgage scorecard or snapshot, snapshot, mortgage snapshot now. And what this does is it tells you whether or not you can save money by trying another bank um, or can you borrow more money. So it, it sort of calculates exactly like in 90 seconds, it will tell you everything and it'll send you an email summary. Now, the, the third one that we're, we're um, pretty proud of, you can see Facebook, um, we've got 62 reviews. Um, this, is, this is more than our competitor Squirrel. <laughs> so, uh, this, um, yeah, you can check out our Facebook for some of the reviews on, on our happy clients, and this is, this is, this is sort of where, where our joy is, you know, some of the successes um, that we have. So definitely check it out, irefi.co.nz. And so to close, um, so one thing that you can take away is uh, if, if you came to think about properties, the, the one thing that you need to take away is that you should buy more properties <laughs> while minimizing risk um, at, at the same time. Um, also stay updated on the latest uh, lending policy by subscribing to us. Um, and, and talking to an advisor, you're gonna help, it's going to help you save thousands and grow, grow your wealth. Uh, through like sound advice. So yeah, who would you choose? You know, like would you choose your bank or an advisor? Thank you. <laughs>